Hi everybody from a very warm and humid mid Wales but it's very beautiful as you can see in the reflection behind me. I wanted to come on quickly and talk to you about counting in twos. So there's a number of things I want us to focus on here. First of all is the word counting. We need to split counting into two different types of counting. And if you've done any work with me, you will hear me talk about this all the time. We've got counting for ordinality, which is about the idea that we say one, then two, then three, then four. If we're saying it in English, obviously it's very different words in other languages. But there is an order that humans have created and we need to follow that order if we're counting along in ones or looking at a number sequence like that. The other way we think about ordinality is also the idea if I have, let me have a look here because I've got lots of counters with me to model this. If we have three counters and everything's going to be backward, but sorry, that's just because of the phone. But this is the first, this is the second and this is the third. So one, two, three, when we're looking at order. This is still, however, one counter, that's one counter and that's one counter. So even though that's the third one, number three, it's still one. So that is one side of counting, counting for ordinality. Then we've got counting for cardinality, and that is the one that I am working really hard to get you to not teach your children before they can really, really subitize well. We, but generally in life, although we don't use this skill as much as we should, subitizing is not only much easier and much more accurate, but it is the basis for your ability to add, subtract, multiply, divide, and use fractions, and counting isn't, okay? So what I want you to think about straight away is the difference between the two uses of that word counting, okay? Now we're gonna specifically look at counting in twos. So, so let's think specifically about this idea of counting in twos. With what I've just said there, counting in twos, we really need to think about it ordinally. So counting for ordinality. The idea that we can go, and, and this is how the pattern works, zero, two, four, six, eight. And then when we get to the 10, that zero repeats, 12, 14, 16, that end digit pattern. And mathematics is built on patterns, all mathematics, and it is fascinating and so important. However, when we look at the other type of counting, counting for cardinality, which is finding out how many or how much, that is should be, in terms of twos, based on subitizing and not counting. And I'm going to show you why. Because if you think about what I said before, that subitizing is the basis of addition, subtraction, multiplication and division. And you will have seen me do lots of things before. I'll just do a simple example here now that if I show you this, for example, if you've done any work with me at all, you'll know about this. You could talk about the fact that you can see two and you can see two, and we could even move that to make it more obvious, move it to prove it. We could put it in a familiar pattern. That's a very familiar pattern for many reasons there. And you can see the two and the two. You can also see the four ones. You can identify a three and a one, and again, move it to prove it to make that even more obvious. But if I was to count these, let's just put them in a random arrangement again one two three four if i ask how many twos now there was just one two and it was there and if i ask how many ones there was just one one and it was there and yet if i was going to add one we'd say add another one so we're definitely calling this one and then we go one two three four five this one's just be called become five now if you don't understand that all of these are ones then it doesn't make sense that that one became five and five now represents the whole set. And that idea of representing the whole set, which counting is one of the principles, comes from labeling whole sets, which is your ability to subitize. So if I go back to the four, you can see, like we said, there's two twos in four. If you count them, and of course I could have counted them in a different order, one, two, three, four, now the one that was three has become two. So counting doesn't allow us, never mind our children, to understand how multiplication works. So when we're talking about counting in twos, away from the ordinal patterns, what we're talking about is how what happens to two when we multiply it. So it's repeated addition as multiplication, or multiplication as repeated addition, depending on how you look at it. So if we 
use our old faithful the 10 frame now I'm going to do it this way I'm going to do it backwards for me so it's the right way around for you okay so here is two the whole thing's called two and then I'm going to add another two because multiplication is this replication in this equal grouping structure of the same amount so we've got two here and then we've got another two here my please don't get too obsessed by this but my counters are double-sided you don't need double-sided ones but you could have used another color mine are very scruffy as you can see that helps to see the twos if i put another two on that's really really helpful to see the twos building up but sometimes what it does is detract from the whole amount so i'm gonna uh, just for you you can decide what's most relevant to your children i'm going to keep building mine up in the same color because this fits in with all the other work that i do with you all but this is the pattern of six when it's on a 10 frame we've got four not there yet maybe they don't know how many that is yet but it's you wouldn't be doing this in twos if they didn't know that but there's some space left on that 10 frame but here's a two here's a two and here's a two and you'll know if you do work with me we only do one to three to begin with perceptual and conceptual subitizing so your children will be really good at this so let's just go back and have a look so the first group of two on the 10 frame how many have we got all together two we add another two now we've made the image of four with two twos in it now we add another two and now we've made the pattern or the image of six and you start to see it's filling up the 10 frame they can see that the same amount woo, if i wasn't dropping it the same amount is being added each time and each time it's creating a new number but what's so wonderful as well is other numbers are still visible those four twos are visible but also if you play what can you see how do you see it you've got two fours you've got a six and a two and of course you've got all the ones let's add another two without dropping them on the floor what do we notice now and of course any child that's been taught to talk about full ten frames finished ten frames this one's finished what do we notice look at all the twos in there so we had one two was equal to two then we added another two equal to four another two equal to six another two equal to eight another two equal to ten and let's do one more as this is where the magic really happens don't say in my opinion ten and a bit or ten and two more talk about it in relation to the next ten because this is a ten and this is just a ten adults get very worked up about teen numbers and the numbers 11 and 12 when we lead into those teens and you shouldn't because it's just another 10. One full 10, two of the next 10. So that's why 12 is written that way. I said we we're going to stop there. Let's do one more. What 14 looks like is much more important than its name. So it's one full 10 and four of the next 10. It's repeating exactly what we saw up here. So one full 10, four of the next 10, 14. So that then leads on to make a lot of sense move this out of the way of this can you see here we've gone from naught to two so two four six eight ten and that was because we had two then we added two more then we added two more and that is exactly the same as this so here is the two and then we added another two and we added another two and we added another two or actually <laughs> i'm doing it my way around i'll do it your way around we had a two it doesn't matter mathematically two and we had another two four and another two six and another two eight that's exactly what's happening there and then for the controversial bit which isn't controversial when you know what the multiplication sign means but we've got two and we've been multiplying it we've been repeating that too taking that too and just like i used to always say on training like a cold bug when a cold bug bug when a cold bug multiplies itself in your body it reproduces itself we all know that so that too in that case has been multiplied five times and it's equivalent to 10. so the model of that would be this it's got the five twos and they are equivalent equal to 10. so just to recap the issue here and it's massive because there are so many people still teaching their children to count to calculate and believe me the single reason 
your children in key stage two are doing this when they've got column methods and nodding along like this is because they're trying to count and they're not looking at the number as a whole and they're not seeing it within place value and they're not seeing the number bonds and all of that is what the national curriculum and pretty much every curriculum in the world is asking you to teach. So this is not Karen Wilding's way. This is about facing up to what is broken and changing things. So counting for ordinality, the numbers in the order they come, the rules are so important and there's loads and loads of beautiful work on patterning. You can do that and I'm going to do a lot more of this for my Pathway and Impact members. So watch out for things in your library because we'll take this and we'll record it somewhere you can put it down, put it down, we'll record it and put a sheet to go with it and so forth, a resource so you can look through how this trajectory works. But remember, counting for ordinality, saying two, four, six, eight, ten, patterning, brilliant. Counting for cardinality, mm -mm. because going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven is not showing you the twos. Subitizing, where you look at the whole amount, over here, whole amount, and how that becomes four, and that becomes six, and that becomes eight, working on patterns and doing no counting. That is the basis, not only for times tables, multiplication tables, but then your children can see how a number is divided. This is a 10 divided into five groups of two, so therefore they're fifths. Two of those fifths is worth four, four of those fifths is worth eight. So this is where your fractions knowledge comes from as well, from subitizing. Okay, let me know your thoughts below.